Turn now to Robert and work with his toughest intrusive memories. Please note that he has been through conventional therapy for almost 30 years and still describes his PTSD as severe. And that's why you have less emotional reaction, even though it is by no means done. You still, you still describe right. it as severe, okay? Right, because I have certain memories that are very severe that I just, when I start thinking about them or when something comes up where I'm remembering them, I do anything I can to forget them. Of course. What we're going to do here is deal with that energy system directly. <clears throat> Not with the memory. We use the memory kind of like a guide. But we're going to deal with the energy system. And the way we do that, and, and why this appears so strange to people, is we have you tap on certain points of your body, under your eye over here and here, and under your arm and here. And we have you do a bunch of things which are seemingly strange and appear to be nothing like psychology, mm -hmm. nothing whatsoever like it. Um, and yet, it really is, because what, what you will find if we're successful here is you'll find as we tap on this, you're going to find some of the emotional reactions you have subside. Uh, and get less and less and less. Uh, to the point where we've had many people sitting in your chair here mm -hmm. uh, in the last couple of days who have, who have gotten over headaches, they've gotten over a lot of anxious feelings, they've taken a lot of their in intrusive memories, mm -hmm. and they've been able to talk right through them from beginning to end with no intensity whatsoever, whereas before on a scale of 0 to 10 it went to a 10, bang like that, just like I think you oh, yeah. qu quickly, okay? Insomnia, where they have slept. Yeah, we've had people, yeah. we just, Phil right here had insomnia, and we just had him give a testimonial, and he's been sleeping fine, and so on. So anyway, I can't give you promises, but I will tell you this does not hurt. And so we'll give it, give it the experience. We won't have you doing things which seem strange. I'll have you tapping here, for example, and among other things, rolling your eyes around your head, and humming, like a song, a happy birthday. Mm -hmm. That's to get your right brain involved. That's the creative part. And then counting one, two, three, four, five, that's to get your left brain involved. But it's a, and we'll have you rubbing a sore spot, and, and we'll have you saying some affirmations, like I accept myself even though I have this thought, or even though I have this feeling, or something. So you just have to kind of flow with us, okay? okay. Next, we have Robert pick out his most intense memory. He labels it the kid, and we start balancing the energy system by using affirmations and tapping on certain body locations. It comes down from a nine and a half to a five to a two and a half to a zero. To this point, we have just addressed this memory in a general way. He is now ready to tell the story. Do you feel comfortable now in discussing it and telling us? Yeah, because I can kind of separate myself from it now. Okay. Here's, here's the way we do it, though, okay? Remember, we're not into having big pain. Right. Okay. What I'd like to have you do is in this one or two minute movie, which has the intense part of the kid in it, I'd like to have you maybe start a little bit before that where it's comfortable to talk about it and then start getting into it. And as you get into it and closer and closer to things that might make you intense, if you get intense, you let me know immediately. Say, I'm getting intense now. Okay. We want to stop right there and deal with this, okay? okay. So go ahead, start. Yeah, you know. let me just interject this. You don't have to get up to a high number. When you start feeling any emotion about it, let us know. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Even a three or a four. Even yeah. a three or a four, we want to know about it, okay? okay? So go ahead. I can remember coming into a village and a buddy of mine, the guy that was driving the truck, wanted to stop for some reason. I didn't, I have, you know, I kind of have a suspicion what he wanted to stop for, but we were stopped outside a bar. And he was inside, and we, I had a kid kept coming up the truck. And I kept on to get away, and kept coming. And I, I wasn't paying too much attention to him. I figured he was just curious. And then I started looking at him, and I noticed he had a grenade in his hand with a pin pulled. How do you feel when you say that? A little anxious, not bad. Yeah. You mean ever? Two, maybe two and a half. Yeah, well, we're going to stop, okay? And you can resume the story in a minute, yeah. but we're just, we're, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I accept myself, or you yourself, do it yourself. I accept myself even though I still have some of this kid emotion. I accept myself even though I have some, still have some of this kid emotion. I accept myself even Okay, collarbone. Uh, now, go back to that point where you've seen the boy with the, with the grenade with the pin pull and tell me if it's still a two or three or whatever it was. Mm. I can see him, and you know, I'm kind of, I'm, 
almost like I'm just watching a movie. Okay, all right, good. That's what we want. All right, continue on with the story, but be sure yeah. you tell me about intensity as you go on, okay? He came up, he kept coming, and I kept telling him, don't come any closer, drop, drop the grenade, and he kept coming at me, and he was, I remember it now, he was kind of in a, almost like the kid was in a trance. And so, I took a rifle and I fired two rounds down his feet. The kid still kept coming. And... How do you feel when you say that? Anxious. Okay, give me a number. Three, maybe. Three, okay. Rub, rub it yourself. I accept myself, even though I still have some of this kid emotion. I accept myself, even though I still have some of this kid emotion. I accept Okay, tune back into that now. You, you fired two, two rounds at his feet and he still keeps coming. Mm, just like I'm watching a movie. Okay, continue on. And he kept coming and I kept trying to... Finally, I didn't have any choice. I had to shoot him. Mm -hmm. How's that feel? Anxious because I don't like... You know, it's something I didn't want to do. Now, zero, zero to ten, where are you? Probably an eight. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. I accept myself even though I have this kid emotion. I accept myself even though I still have this kid I emotion. I accept myself even though I shot the kid. I accept myself even though I shot the kid. Two more times. I accept. Where are you now? Probably down to about a zero. You think you're a zero? Probably a half a zero. Okay. I can I can see the kid. I can see him laying there dead. Because have you ever been able to, to see the kid laying there dead and having the, the emotional response you have now? No. The zero. Has it always been a 10 or something? It's always been at least a 10. Okay. Even though Robert has never been able to tell this story calmly before, we still want to test it. So he is asked to tell it again to see if any emotional intensity comes up. The story you're telling is the, the, the two-minute movie. The most intense part of shooting the boy? Yeah, the most okay. part, intense so, so part we got, is... So we got the intense part. Yeah. But I'd like to have you go back and get into it again, okay? Because he's something okay. else comes out. Are, do you feel comfortable doing that? Yeah. Okay, all right. We had pulled into the village. Anybody of mine says, hey, I've got to I've got to do something. I'll be right back. And I don't... I said something to him, I don't... Something about, you know, we should, we should be moving on. We're not seeing, we're supposed to be in the village. The village is restricted. Well, don't worry about it. So we kept on. So he went in and I waited in the vehicle. And I remember the kid kind of looking interested at the truck and I didn't pay too much attention. I figured, hey, he's just a young kid. He's curious. How old was he? Mm, five, six, maybe, if that old. It's hard to tell. Right. And then I noticed the kid disappeared for a minute or two, and I didn't pay much attention. I figured, well, he got bored, he, or he just didn't want to look anymore. Next thing I know, he's coming from the other side of the building, and he's got something in his hand, kind of behind him. And I can't see what he's got in his hand. He's still quite a ways away, and his hand is kind of behind his back. So I finally he gets up probably 60, 70 feet away, maybe if that far. And I can I can kind of halfway see what he's got. He's got his hand, something clenched in his hand. I still can't quite see it, but I can see his hand is clenching something about the size of a grenade. And I figure, okay, he's probably got a rock. He's probably gonna throw a rock. No problem. I can I figure, what's he going to do with a rock? Then I, then he, all of a sudden, this hand, his hand comes out behind me. He's probably, oh, maybe 40 feet away from us, if that far. And it's, he's got a grenade in it. I don't know how the kid had the strength to hold the grenade and the spoon, but he did. So he, all of a sudden, I, I'm talking to him, telling him to leave. And then I hear the spoon spring. And you hear, I, you hear the what? I hear this ping. He let go of that grenade and the spoon had oh, okay. flung off of it, so it was fully armed. All he had to do was 
put it at us, and we were, and the truck was gone, and I was gone with it. Mm -hmm. So how do you I, feel when you say that? I really don't feel any emotion because I. Okay. And so I fired three round, fired three, four rounds, I guess, down by his feet, kind of giving him a notice, hey, don't come any closer. I've got a weapon, I will shoot you. So he just keeps right on coming. And it's like, hey, I'm, I'm in a trance, I don't care. So then I fired another round, and I hit him in the shoulder. I figured, okay, I'm gonna get him to drop the weapon. Get him to drop the grenade. Hit him in the shoulder, he's gonna grab, he's gonna drop the grenade and grab his arm. He didn't do it, he just kept running and coming like a zombie. So I finally I said, well, I, I've got to get rid of him now or he's gonna be so close to the truck. It's gonna take me, he's gonna take How do you take, feel right now? I really don't feel any emotion at Go all. Ahead. Yeah. So I just, uh, I took the, I finally raised, raised it up to where it's about even with his head. And I fired a couple, I fired three rounds, I guess. And all of a sudden, he dropped down, the grenade kind of dropped behind him. And it wasn't, oh, maybe and three, four, six. Firing the three rounds, you hit him in the head? Yeah. Okay, how do you feel when you say that? It's almost like I'm watching, it's like I'm watching a movie. Is it a zero, one, two, five? Probably a zero, maybe a half. Okay, all right, go ahead. And, I, you know, it's like the back of his head, I see the back of his head splatter. And you know, it's like, okay. And then I hear, I see the grenade kind of drop out of his hand and roll back behind him. And I hear it explode. Mm, maybe five, 10 seconds later. All of a sudden, here come all these village people. Tear out of there. What'd you do to my kid? How come you shot my kid? Never mind the kid had a grenade and he almost Killed half. He almost killed a couple of people in the little building. The great grenade did or did not go off. The grenade did go off. It rolled back yeah. behind him, probably 20, 30 feet, and went off, kind of behind a well. How so, did you feel when the people came out and were yelling at you? I was anxious because I was. I didn't know whether I was going to have to shoot. How do you feel now? Now I'm really hey. You know, it's, they're doing what they thought. They didn't understand what was going on. Are you feeling the anxiousness now? Not really, no. Having finished with his most intense memory, we then helped Robert neutralize his second most intense memory. This one had to do with the wiping out of a village. We used the same technique and got the same result. That is, zero emotional intensity. We tune in now at the end of this second intense memory as Robert inadvertently pays these techniques the ultimate compliment. He yawns and says he is bored. In normal social situations, this may be considered rude, but we are delighted. Remember, he is dealing with traumatic memories that have haunted him for decades and cause him nightmares. I don't feel anxious at all. Good, all right, great, go ahead. And I can remember, you know, the dozer, <sighs> Digging a big hole. I can remember him digging a big hole and just shoving people in it. Okay. Why did you yawn? Boredom, maybe, because I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking how many times it, I've seen it in the movies, how many times I've seen it depicted in TV. Depicted yeah. in TV. It was an interesting reaction. And the reason I ask you that was quite often people, when they when they do this, they get so relaxed as a result of tapping the energy system. Yeah, well, that they it's literally like, start to lose. Then they think they're losing energy, but what they're doing is they're being very relaxed in a way that they've never been before, if they can remember. Does that fit for you? Yeah, because I've never, you know, really felt like, okay, hey, it happened. It's just like I'm watching a movie. Yeah, I want, you, I want you to do going. something for me, okay? Mm -hmm. I want you to go back to the first scene, and I want you to imagine shooting the boy, and tell me what kind of emotional intensity you have about that. Boredom. <laughs> Boredom. Yeah. Okay. That's better than the other one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You have to get going. Yeah. I get one final visit with Robert. He came in for another session the next morning and reported that he had had his best night's sleep in five years. I then tested the kid emotion one more time to see if the passage of 24 hours had brought anything back. Please notice that he has no trace of it left.